Welcome to Home TV. I'm Tracy Prees and here's today's news from home. Airports in our far northern communities are in urgent need of an upgrade. NDP Solma Makwa is calling on the provincial government to recognize the issue. 27 Ontario First Nations communities in our region are fly-in only and the residents rely on planes to deliver essential services and supplies including groceries, health care and policing. The far northern airport runways are only made of gravel and some of them are as short as 3,500 feet. Mamakwa says airport improvements are long overdue. Among the list of recommendations made by Ontario NDP critic for Indigenous and Treaty Relations, Mamakwa highlighted the following. Upgrades to terminals, some do not have running hot water or potable water on site, some do not have functioning septic systems. Guaranteed de-icing service at all 27 airports in the remote northern Ontario communities. Larger paved runways to accommodate larger aircraft. Increased staff outside of normal business hours and better salaries that reflect this responsibility. And that the MTO recertify the runways at these airports in order to fully utilize the funding received by NAV Canada to implement LPV landing systems as those currently in place are archaic. With the walk against nuclear waste to Dryden from Ignace clocking 61 kilometers yesterday, Grand Council Treaty 3 has issued a news release today in regards to the issue of burying Canada's nuclear waste deep underground at Revel Lake near Ignace. GCT 3 stated that, quote, it will continue to be the stance of Grand Council Treaty 3 and Wabagoon Lake Ojibwe Nation that the Learn More agreements with the nuclear waste management do not indicate a position or opinion on the development. Along with many Anishinaabe citizens and elders in the Treaty 3 community, Anishinaabe Aski Nation chiefs oppose a repository project in the Wabagoon Lake Territory. Treaty 3 further advised that authorization of the project based on Anishinaabe law will ensure the Anishinaabe Nation's responsibilities to the land and water are fulfilled, and when the Nation provides its decision on these matters, it will be informed and rooted in the Nation's protocols. With electric vehicles being of global interest, mining companies have their sights on the region searching for nickel and other mineral ingredients for batteries. The CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, has declared nickel as the new gold. Beyond Minerals Inc., a junior mineral exploration company based in Winnipeg, has staked 114 claims in the northwestern Ontario region, totaling approximately 2,220 hectares. Craig Gibson, president and CEO of Beyond Minerals, stated in an interview that northwestern Ontario is a promising area for high-grade gold deposits and battery minerals, and that the territory is underexplored, but exploration companies already here, Barrick, Evolution Mining and Kinross, have established the region as a leading mining hub. The areas of their new claims are just southwest of Sandy Lake, encompassing Borland Lake, Favorable Lake and Gorman River, just across from property owned by Frontier Lithium. Anishinaabek Police Service is the first police service in Ontario to issue traditional ribbon skirts to its female serving members as part of their dress uniform when wearing a duty belt is not required. Sergeant Karen Bell, a serving member for three decades, consulted with other police services in the country who have already recognized their First Nations police women with ribbon skirts and felt it was important to bring this gesture to Ontario. Twelve female members were presented with their ribbon skirts on Wednesday. The Anishinaabe Police Service has 16 detachments on First Nations territories across Ontario. And that's your Home TV News update for this hour. I'm Tracy Prees. Have a great Labor Day long weekend.